Good evening. Thank you for joining us on this Good Friday night worship service. Tonight's the night that we remember the work of the cross, the work that Jesus did on our behalf. It symbolizes his love and his grace. I want to invite you to join with me as we worship uh, with these next few songs, lifting the name, lifting the amazing, wonderful cross of Christ. Hi. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Praise the name of the Lord, oh God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, Lord, oh Lord, our oh God. Then on the third at break of dawn the son of heaven rose again oh trample death where is your sting the angels roll for Christ the king oh praise the Praise His name forevermore For endless days we will sing Your praise O Lord, O Lord our God He shall return in robes of Blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our oh God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord of God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise His name forevermore For endless days we will sing Your praise O Lord, O Lord our God O Lord, O Lord our God Christ enough for me Christ is 
enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need Christ my all in all my joy and my salvation and this hope will never fail heaven is our home through every storm my soul will sing Jesus is here to God be the glory Christ is enough for me Christ enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning Turning back the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Oh, Christ is enough for me, Christ. Christ is enough, Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me, everything I need is in you, everything I need, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back, no turning
Welcome and thank you for joining us on our Good Friday service. It's a very unusual time that we find ourselves in. And this is actually the first time that our EM has planned a Good Friday service. And though we may be separated, and though we are not together in the sanctuary at this time, we know that nothing will be able to stop our worship here tonight. Good Friday is a time for us to gather together to reflect on the cross and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to come together, and we're going to remember the sacrifice, remember the pain, remember the agony that Jesus was willing to take for us. And it's going to be a little different from our usual worship. What we're going to do, actually, is to come together, and we're going to go over and read Jesus' final seven words. We call them the last seven words of Jesus. And each time after, we're going to have a moment to reflect. And then we're going to come together as a community to pray. Because now more than ever, it's a time for prayer. But since this is new, we'll give you a few moments to get ready. Take this time to quiet your heart. If you need to quiet your surroundings, do that as well. If you need to turn off the lights wherever you are. If you need to put away your phones, turn off any distractions. Just take this time to prepare your hearts and create this space so God can speak to us and so that we can fully experience Good Friday. We'll begin with prayer at this time. Heavenly Father God, we have come together to take this time to pause and to be able to just focus on you tonight to be able to focus and remember your sacrifice for us. And Lord, we ask of you at this time, to just open up the eyes to the love that you have for us, for the love that was shed on that cross 2,000 years ago, Lord. And help us, Lord, tonight to just remember you, Lord. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. The first word, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. As Jesus is looking down from the cross, he sees the soldiers who have mocked him, who have ridiculed him, who have scourged him, tortured him, who are planning in this very moment to steal from him. And he sees those who have just nailed him to the cross. And yet, in the midst of this execution, Jesus' mind was not on his disciples. His mind was not on his family members, or even on those on the crowd who were mourning and grieving him. But his heart was for the very people who had just crucified him. Because right up to that final moment on this earth, Jesus preached forgiveness. And he prayed for those whose very actions will cause him not only pain, but also his death. So like Jesus at this moment, let's begin at this time to pray for those who have hurt you. Pray for those who have wronged you. For those who have ridiculed you. And pray for those it is most difficult to forgive. And pray and ask for the grace to forgive. And the grace to keep on forgiving. And whatever bitterness and whatever resentment that we are holding in our hearts, pray so that we may be able to let go of it. And if you are unable to do so, pray and ask God to do the forgiving on our behalf. And remember that we forgive others because God first forgave us. Let's come together at this time and just pray so that we may be able to forgive. Let us pray. that cross he looked down upon those who accused you he looked down upon those who ridiculed you who mocked you who took away your humanity Lord. and he looked on them not with contempt he looked on them not with anger Lord but you looked on them with love and your mercy 
more than anyone else. Your heart went out to them first. And you cried out to your Father, Lord, forgive me. For they do not know what they do. And you were willing at that moment to just forgive me. Lord, there are so many things. So many times it is hard for us to forgive. Lord, we pray, Lord. for your mercy and for your love, Lord, to be part of our hearts, and to remember all the those that we were unable to forget, all those that we were unable to forget, Lord. And we ask you to help us to remember those slights, to let go of those feelings, and whatever pain and whatever sorrow that we are holding inside of us, to be able to let go at this moment, and to forget just as you have just as you have forgiven those soldiers, and to forgive, just as you have forgiven those accusers, those who have caused you pain, Lord. And we ask you at this time, hearts, to forgive, Lord. Today we can second word truly I tell you today you will be with me in paradise scripture says that two other men both criminals were also led out with him to be executed and when they came to the place called a skull they crucified him there along with the criminals one on his right and one on his left and one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus offers us the hope of salvation and opens the door for any repentant sinner. And how fitting that even as he was dying, that Jesus was leading another to eternal life. So at this time now as we pray, let's pray for those who have not yet experienced this love. Pray for those who have never heard this voice of Jesus. I pray for those who need to know who Jesus is. It's not too late. And pray for those that need to possess this hope of salvation, this hope of Jesus Christ, this hope that can be found in the resurrection. And pray for those so they may be able to meet Jesus Christ tonight. Let's take this time to just pray for them. Whoever is in your life that do not yet know Jesus Christ, Let's pray for them at this moment. That somehow, that they will be able to hear Jesus' voice. They'll be able to stand next to Jesus, like this repentant man. And they too may be able to meet Jesus. Let us all pray. Lord God, we thank you. Lord. We thank you 
for we already possess that. We already know who you are. We know what the cross means. And the cross means the hope of resurrection. And the cross means eternal life for all those who believe. Yet there are so many, Lord, so many among us that do not yet know who you are. That do not yet know Here is your son, and here is your mother. At the cross, we find Jesus and mother together again. That Jesus began his ministry at a wedding in Cana, and his mother was there as well. And now, at the end of his ministry, they are together again. But the circumstances cannot be more different. As Mary looked upon Jesus on the cross, what sorrow must fill a mother's heart and how she must have felt meeting her son as he carried the cross and how she must have felt as those around him beat him, whipped him, as they spit on him and cursed him and how she must have felt watching the nails go into his body the body that she had cared for. No pain on this world was greater than hers in this moment. And Jesus, being who he is on the cross, he takes the time and love to place his mother into the care of his beloved disciple, John. And he says, woman, here is your son. And to John, he says, here is your mother. As we recall and remember this word of relationship, let us pray for those who are in need. Let us pray for those who cannot care for themselves on their own in this moment. There are so many of us, so many of us around us who are struggling, who are unable to take care of their own needs, who are in financial need who are in need in different ways, who need the comfort, who need someone else to take care of them. And like Jesus on this Good Friday, 
Let's pray for God's providence to be upon our sisters and brothers. And let's pray for God's grace to be just poured upon them in this time. And for someone to save them. Take care of them. Join me in praying for our brothers in need at this time. Join me in praying for our sisters in need at this time. Let us all come together and pray. fourth word Eli Eli Lama Sakpatani My God, my God why have you forsaken me? On the ninth hour of the day after three hours of darkness Jesus cried out his fourth word the prophecy of the suffering servant fulfilled in this moment the cry from the painful heart of one who was now separated from the Father. The most dreadful moment in our history. On the cross, Jesus echoes the words from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. And by night, I find no rest. At this time, let us come together and pray for those who feel forsaken. Let's come together and pray for those who feel abandoned, who feel lonely. Pray for those who truly need the Father's touch at this moment. And let's pray that Jesus makes himself known to them, especially during this season. Help them to know that they are not abandoned, that they are not forsaken, for here is their Savior. And to know that even though they may cry out the words of Psalm 22 and these devastating words, that these words are followed by Psalm 23. Help them to know and confess that even though I walk through the darkest valley, that I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So pray 
for the peace that transcends all understanding to be upon you and to be upon your loved ones and to be upon all those who are feeling lost and lonely at this time and pray for that spirit of God that spirit of God that true spirit of God to be with them in this very moment let us pray together on that cross he cried out my God my God why have you there are many around us that are making the same plea. There are many around us who are making the same plea. My God, my God, why have you risen? Even us, Lord. There are many of us in this very moment who are feeling forsaken, who are feeling lost, who are feeling like God has lost you, has not around us. And we can't find Him in this very moment. Lord, remind us at this time that you are with us. Remind us at this time that you have never left us. So we may cry out, my God, my God, why have you been here? That you are with us this very moment, that your spirit is upon us, that no matter what happens, that you will never leave us, Lord. That you will be with us, and that you will be with them, our brothers and sisters who are in here. We pray for your spirit to just be gracing them. We pray for your spirit to hold on to them, and to show them that you have not forsaken fifth word I am thirsty the wounds inflicted upon him the crowning of his head with thorns the three hour walk carrying the cross the nails in his hands the nails in his feet are now all taking their toll on him this fifth word of Jesus it is only human expression of his physical suffering. And though it is short, I am thirsty, is a cry of his excruciating pain. And he reveals to us the fullness of his suffering in that moment. This is the word of distress. At this time, let us come together and how appropriate for this season. Let us pray for those who are in pain, who are feeling physical pain, who are feeling med mental pain, who are feeling spiritual distress at this moment. Let us come together and pray for those who are sick. Pray for those who are in need of relief, who are in need of healing, who cannot find comfort on their own. Pray for those who thirst for Jesus. Pray that they may drink of the water that Jesus provides and never thirst again. Never suffer again. Never be in pain again. This season, Lord, so many people are suffering. There are so many members of our communities, of our family members who are sick, who are ill, who are unable to overcome this on their own. Lord, be with them. Be with them. And just show and shower your comfort and your healing upon them. And show them, Lord, that you are Jesus who heals them. And nothing is too big for you, Lord. So at this time, let us come together and let us just pray for those who need your healing hands. Let us all pray together.
sixth word it is finished John tells us that this day was a day of preparation and the next day was to be a very special Sabbath you know on this day the rabbis they will prepare the lambs for sacrifice and after the rabbis will slaughter these lambs they would utter one word and one word only kala it is finished. And perhaps at the very moment these rabbis were preparing the lamb to be slaughtered, Jesus too utters the same words, revealing himself to be the Christ, revealing himself to be our Passover lamb. Jesus is the innocent lamb claimed for our sins. Jesus is the one slaughtered so that we may be forgiven. The love of the Father, the obedience of the Son, the task now complete, we are redeemed. And by these words, there is nothing for us to do. There is nothing for us to prove. And though we do not merit any of this, and though we fall so short, there is nothing for us to earn on our own. But now, by these three simple words, it is finished. There is nothing that death and sin can do to us. So at this time, as we remember Jesus' sixth word, let us give thanks. Let us make this day a good day. It's Good Friday a day of prayer and gratitude. And let's give thanks like we've never given thanks before. Let's just glorify His name and give thanks to the One who has set us free. And give thanks to the Lord for He is good. And give thanks to the Lord for now we are slaves to sin no longer. And we are now slaves to death no longer. And with all that you have, with your hearts, cry out to Him. And just lift up together one voice this prayer of thanksgiving. Just give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Let us all pray. Lord, we thank you and we thank you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for you who are willing to take on death for us. That you are willing to take on pain and suffering for us. That you are willing to walk the path of suffering.
by these three simple words, we were set free from the bondage of sin. That we were set free from the bondage of slavery. That we belong to no one else but you from now on. For that we give thanks. For that we lift up your name above all things. And we glorify you with all that we have here tonight. Lord, we give thanks for who you are. We give thanks for what you have done. And we give thanks for the grace that you have poured upon us. And though we have fallen short over and over again, we give thanks because we are set free. That it is finished. That we already have the victory. That we already have this freedom. That we have all of this already because of what you have done. It is finished, Lord. It is finished. It is finished. There's nothing more that we need to do. We live by your grace. We live in your grace. We are in your grace today. And we'll be in that grace tomorrow. So help us to rejoice in this moment. And help us to lift up all that we have to you, Lord. And cry out, thank you. Cry out, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Help us to never forget to give thanks for what you have done. Lord, we thank you. The seventh and final word. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The final and seventh word is directed to Father, just as Jesus gives his final breath. Jesus was obedient to the very end, and fittingly, his final word before his death was a prayer to his beloved Father. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. As we remember these words, let us also remember the promise that the Father has given us. Let's remember the words of John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. There is no better time than now, on this Good Friday, to place yourself in God's hands, to surrender all that you have and commit to the Father's hands. So at this time as we pray, I want everyone here to submit your concerns, submit your hopes and your dreams. Don't hold anything back and just be able to surrender all that you have to Him. And say the same prayer that Jesus prayed. And say, into your hands, Father, I commit my spirit. Into your Father's hand, Lord, I surrender my life. I surrender all that I have into you. And just make this our prayer as well. Into your hands, Lord. Into your hands, Father. I surrender and commit all that I have to you. Let's just take this final time of prayer and just pray this out loud. Join me in praying and confessing this. Let us pray. Lord, as Jesus gave his final word, he prayed to the Father. He said, into your hands I commit my spirit. And into your hands I surrender all that I have. And I've lived my life in surrender of you. And in this final moment, I continue to do the same. Help us, Lord, in this moment, on this Good Friday, to commit all that we have to you, to commit our spirit, to commit our lives, to surrender our concerns, our hopes and our dreams, our fears and our worries and our burdens, that we are able to just commit and surrender all that to you, that we will not hold back in this moment, Lord, that we will surrender all that it is that we have to you and commit my life to you in this moment. On this Good Friday, Lord, as we remember the cross of Jesus Christ, as we remember the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we remember our Savior, 
we commit all that we have to you, Lord. We surrender all that we are to you, Lord. We will not live according to our will, but we will walk in your will. And we will only live by your will alone. But from this moment on, on Good Friday, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Lord, we stand here together on this Good Friday. And we remember the pain and suffering that you endured on the cross. And all that you were willing to do for us, Lord. So that we can be set free. Lord Jesus, you have paid the price. You have sacrificed all of this to offer this gift of eternal life for each and every one of us here. Lord, we pray on this Good Friday, help us to never forget, help us to never take for granted this gift and this love, and help us to always be reminded of the cost of it all that it did not come free. Especially on this season, on this Good Friday, help us to remember our brothers and sisters and so that we may be able to share that love and that message of the cross with them as well. And Lord, we ask that you bring healing to those who are sick. That we ask that you bring comfort to those who are weary. That your people are grieving at this moment. Your people are mourning and they are in fear. And they have so much anxiety inside of them. And though this world around us is full of uncertainty and doubt, Lord, help us to proclaim the same words by the prophet Isaiah, that by your wounds we are healed. Lord, thank you for sin and death having conquered. And thank you for your power is everlasting. Lord, we come together and we declare to the nation these seven words. We come together, and Lord, we confess the same seven words that you spoke on the cross. Lord, help us to have these seven words be our confession as well. Help these seven words to be able to lead us in our faith. Lord, help us to remember you, not only on this night, but every day forward as well. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. And we have all come together. And we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I want to thank everyone here for joining us for our Good Friday service this year. I want to thank you for not only worshiping with us, but also praying for us as well. And although this portion of the worship is over, I want to invite everyone to just remain in your seats. Remain where you are. And just hold on to this time of worship and this time of prayer. Just go down on your knees and pray on your own. And whether you need to pray for yourself, Pray for your loved ones. Just pray for your brothers and sisters out there. Just take this time. Continue. To just present your petitions to Him. Knowing that when you ask in faith, that it is already done. And God will answer all our prayers. Let us continue to pray.